Section eight of Oscar Wilde Art and Morality A Defence of the Picture of Dorian Gray Edited by Stuart Mason This Librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by Martin Geeson Section eight Art should never try to be popular the public should try and make itself artistic the daily chronicle on dorian gray footnote june thirtieth eighteen ninety dullness and dirt are the chief features of lippincott's this month the element in it that is unclean though undeniably amusing is furnished by mr oscar wilde's story of the picture of dorian gray it is a tale spawned from the leprous literature of the french decadent a poisonous book the atmosphere of which is heavy with the mephitic odours of moral and spiritual putrefaction a gloating study of the mental and physical corruption of a fresh fair and golden youth which might be horrible and fascinating but for its effeminate frivolity its studied insincerity its theatrical cynicism its tawdry mysticism its flippant philosophizings and the contaminating trail of garish vulgarity which is over all mr wilde's elaborate wardour street aestheticism and obtrusively cheap scholarship mr wilde says his book has a moral the moral so far as we can collect it is that man's chief end is to develop his nature to the fullest by always searching for new sensations that when the soul gets sick the way to cure it is to deny the senses nothing for nothing says one of mr wilde's characters lord henry wotton can cure the soul but the senses just as nothing can cure the senses but the soul man is half angel and half ape and mr wilde's book has no real use if it be not to inculcate the moral that when you feel yourself becoming too angelic you cannot do better than rush out and make a beast of yourself there is not a single good and holy impulse of human nature scarcely a fine feeling or instinct that civilization art and religion have developed throughout the ages as part of the barriers between humanity and animalism that is not held up to ridicule and contempt in dorian gray if indeed such strong words can be fitly applied to the actual effect of mr wilde's airy levity and fluent impudence his desperate attempt to vamp up a moral for the book at the end is artistically speaking coarse and crude because the whole incident of dorian gray's death is as they say on the stage out of the picture dorian's only regret is that unbridled indulgence in every form of secret and unspeakable vice every resource of luxury and art and sometimes still more piquant to the jaded young men of fashion whose lives dorian gray pretends to sketch by every abomination of vulgarity and squalor is what why that it will leave traces of premature age and loathsomeness on his pretty face rosy with the loveliness that endeared youth of his odious type to the paralytic patricians of the lower empire dorian gray prays that a portrait of himself which an artist who raves about him as young men do about the women they love not wisely but too well has painted 
may grow old instead of the original this is what happens by some supernatural agency the introduction of which seems purely farcical so that dorian goes on enjoying unfading youth year after year and might go on forever using his senses with impunity to cure his soul defiling english society with the moral pestilence which is incarnate in him but for one thing that is his sudden impulse not merely to murder the painter which might be artistically defended on the plea that it is only a fresh development of his scheme for realising every phase of life experience but to rip up the canvas in a rage merely because though he had permitted himself to do one good action it had not made his portrait less hideous but all this is inconsistent with dorian gray's cool calculating conscienceless character evolved logically enough by mr wilde's new hedonism then mr wilde finishes his story by saying that on hearing a heavy fall dorian gray's servants rushed in found the portrait on the wall as youthful looking as ever its senile ugliness being transferred to the foul profligate himself who is lying on the floor stabbed to the heart this is a sham moral as indeed everything in the book is a sham except the one element in the book which will taint every young mind that comes in contact with it that element is shockingly real and it is the plausibly insinuated defence of the creed that appeals to the senses to cure the soul whenever the spiritual nature of man suffers from too much purity and self-denial oh, the rest of this number of lippincott consists of articles of harmless padding when critics disagree the artist is in accord with himself oscar wilde's reply dorian gray to the editor of the daily chronicle footnote july second eighteen ninety sir will you allow me to correct some errors into which your critic has fallen in his review of my story the picture of dorian gray published in today's issue of your paper your critic states to begin with that i make desperate attempts to vamp up a moral in my story now i must candidly confess that i do not know what vamping is i see from time to time mysterious advertisements in the newspapers about how to vamp but what vamping really means remains a mystery to me a mystery that like all other mysteries i hope some day to explore however i do not propose to discuss the absurd terms used by modern journalism what i want to say is that so far from wishing to emphasize any moral in my story the real trouble i experienced in writing the story was that of keeping the extremely obvious moral subordinate to the artistic and dramatic effect when i first conceived the idea of a young man selling his soul in exchange for eternal youth an idea that is old in the history of literature but to which i have given new form i felt that from an aesthetic point of view it would be difficult to keep the moral in its proper secondary place and even now i do not feel quite sure that i have been able to do so i think the moral too apparent when the book is published in a volume i hope to correct this defect 
as for what the moral is your critic states that it is this that when a man feels himself becoming too angelic he should rush out and make a beast of himself i cannot say that i consider this a moral the real moral of the story is that all excess as well as all renunciation brings its punishment and this moral is so far artistically and deliberately suppressed that it does not enunciate its law as a general principle but realizes itself purely in the lives of individuals and so becomes simply a dramatic element in a work of art and not the object of the work of art itself your critic also falls into error when he says that dorian gray having a cool calculating conscienceless character was inconsistent when he destroyed the picture of his own soul on the ground that the picture did not become less hideous after he had done what in his vanity he had considered his first good action dorian gray has not got a cool calculating conscienceless character at all on the contrary he is extremely impulsive absurdly romantic and is haunted all through his life by an exaggerated sense of conscience which mars his pleasures for him and warns him that youth and enjoyment are not everything in the world it is finally to get rid of the conscience that had dogged his steps from year to year that he destroys the picture and thus in his attempt to kill conscience dorian gray kills himself your critic then talks about obtrusively cheap scholarship now whatever a scholar writes is sure to display scholarship in the distinction of style and the fine use of language but my story contains no learned or pseudo-learned discussions and the only literary books that it alludes to are books that any fairly educated reader may be supposed to be acquainted with such as the satyricon of petronius arbiter or gautier's imu et Camé. such books as leconso's clericalis disciplina belong not to culture but to curiosity anybody may be excused for not knowing them finally let me say this the aesthetic movement produced certain curious colours subtle in their loveliness and fascinating in their almost mystical tone they were and are our reaction against the crude primaries of a doubtless more respectable but certainly less cultivated age my story is an essay on decorative art it reacts against the crude brutality of plain realism it is poisonous if you like but you cannot deny that it is also perfect and perfection is what we artists aim at i remain sir your obedient servant oscar wilde sixteen tight street june the thirtieth end of section eight